good morning, good morning. Mr. Robert is back, Secured Entrepreneurs. We have been going so hard this month of August, and I'm talking, Mr. Rora hasn't even had the opportunity to do the things that she needs to do for herself. We've been going so hard, okay? I want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone who's emailing. Please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com. We have one VIP left for the month of August. So if you have an interest in coming to lovely Las Vegas and spending a day or two with Miss Aurora at a luxurious non-gaming hotel, preferably the Four Seasons, but we allow you to choose the one that, you know, fits your needs at the time in which you will be visiting. All right. You can go to auroradayconsulting.com, click the link at the top for VIP, and we can get that going. So if you're ready to have all of your legal entities properly structured, you want to get this training on this lovely technology, uh, these, uh, the systems, the techniques, the strategies, okay, let's make it happen. In this video, Ms. Aurora has got to get into why it is the secured entrepreneurs are choosing a trust over the traditional legal structures for a 501c3 organization. Okay. Now we have really been doing a lot of these entities in the past two and a half years for a variety of reasons. We have had many secured entrepreneurs come on board who tried the traditional way of doing the, you know, 501c3 organization and they have had a lot of issues for a variety of reasons. So many people have made the change for the reasons that I'm going to go over in this video. I'm gonna give about five reasons in this video. Okay. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to come on board and have your affairs taken care of properly as well. All right. Can we do it? All right. For, so for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you create six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around. And we all know that this is the secured entrepreneur movement. All right, now, Secured Entrepreneurs, we all know that the Internal Revenue Service tells us that if your organization is falling under any one of the seven headings that they deem to be tax exempt, that organization is automatically tax exempt. They tell us that you don't need to ask us to exempt you. You don't need to ask us for permission to be tax exempt. You don't need to ask us for a letter of tax exemption. They also let us know that many organizations are preferring to ask them for a, an exemption letter because they want to appeal to the organizations that will give them money. They want to appeal to these organizations because it makes them feel more comfortable knowing that they have the authority to inform on you. If they feel like you have misused the funds that you were given or that you, uh, what's the word, that you misrepresented your reasoning as it relates to the purpose of your organization to them and they gave you monies, they can inform on you. There is a list on irs.gov of revoked 501c3 organizations, <laughs> okay? So if you're not careful, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the proper team who put that thing together and you do not know how to operate it, you may be in for some surprises. Also, we here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement know that it's it's just a, a low-level situation that has been put on a pedestal so high, but we know that most people don't have the right intentions for, for doing it in the first place. They really want to I hate to, I hate to say this, but they want to steal money. Okay. I, I don't like to say that, but that's really their intention. Their intention is to create an organization like this so that they can, you know, get funds for things that they know they're not going to utilize for the purpose in which they tell the internal revenue service that they will, they're, they're, they're scammers. And this is a way for them to continue to scam. And, and, you know, people like this, they do 
different types of scams. You know, this is not the only scam that they do, but it's one that's lucrative for them. And they're actually using it to live their lives. They're not running that organization. We've seen it all here in the secure entrepreneur movement. Okay. So the seven categories, what do they tell us? They tell us that if you have a charitable organization, it is automatically tax exempt. If you have a religious organization, it is automatically tax exempt. If your purpose is literary, it is automatically tax exempt. If your purpose is scientific, it is automatically tax exempt. If your purpose is to prevent cruelty of animals and children, it is automatically tax exempt. If it has to do with public safety, it is automatically tax exempt. If it has to do with amateur sports, it is automatically tax exempt. I think that's seven. If Mr. Rowe is missing one, some secured entrepreneur, please put it down in the comments. Okay. But those are the seven categories that the internal revenue service says, if you are, if you are creating an organization under these categories, these are automatically tax exempt. Okay. And they really go in on religious churches and an auxiliary of a church, any type of uh, spiritual organization, a ministry, things like that, that these, these things are automatically tax exempt. So you don't need to come up here and ask us for a letter in, in, unless you really want to. Okay. Now there are rules and they have videos up there letting you know that if you're operating like this, these are the things that we really want you to do to stay in compliance because compliance is a key thing and you can suffer some consequences if you are operating on a tax exempt uh, uh level like this and you do not stay in compliance that could be a problem for you okay but you know here in the secured entrepreneur movement mr world got you covered right so the very first reason why the secured entrepreneurs are choosing the trust structure over some traditional legal structures for a 501c3 we would have to say it would have a lot to do with having greater control and flexibility. Why? Because the grantor of this trust has the opportunity to now state how it is he, she, they desire to have the funds being used. How are the funds being used that align with the greater purpose, the purpose in which this organization was created? When an agency or an entity does not have their thumb on my organization, I have the ability and the authority to design this entity and allow it to move the way that aligns with the purpose in which I created it. There's, there's nobody dictating how I'm supposed to be doing this thing. I have the control and the flexibility to dictate how funds are coming in the way I desire for them to come in and how funds are going out and how I'm going to document this entity, the way I'm going to word this entity, the instructions I'm going to give to a trustee, the way that I desire for the beneficiaries to be treated which, which more than likely are going to be other organizations, how I want monies to be funneled down into those organizations and how I want those organizations to play well with this main organization, this main thing. How is this happening? I have the control and the flexibility to do that, to make that go and flow simply because there's no head telling me, oh no, you can't do that. Oh no, that was a mistake. You, you, you can't, you couldn't have, have did anything like that and still meet the purpose of what this letter is saying you're supposed to do. And this organization that gave you the money, this is how they wanted you to operate. This is what, this is what they said you were supposed to be doing. They found that you were not doing it that way. So now they have informed on you to the internal revenue service and your exemption is a revoked. Okay. So having the greater control and flexibility is to me, one of the main reasons and a priority when it is you are operating under a, a, a tax exempt status, according to the internal revenue service. The second reason that I would share with the secured entrepreneurs and those of you who are visiting with us, please like share comment, subscribe to the channel. If you have not, so you can get some more of this juice. Okay. I'm going to go with enhanced asset protection. Now, all of the secured entrepreneurs know here 
know that that is what we're about. Tax-free wealth, asset protection, okay? Living the lifestyle that you truly desire. Make more money, keep it safe, live your luxury lifestyle, whatever that is to you. So we need enhanced asset protection. Now, when it is that I'm operating this organization that is tax exempt, the organization is going to have assets along the way. It's going to have to have assets. It may, it may have to have a building. It may have to have a home. It may have to have some land, whatever it is that meets the purpose. It may need machinery. It may need automobiles. Okay. It may need books, valuable books. I'm talking, you know, Miss Aurora has worked with many clients who have had to uh, we had to have books appraised and, 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 and covered a particular way, just like a coin. I mean, it, you know, it's been a magnanimous journey being in this game. Okay. So the assets that your not your 501 C three entity needs, I, I'm trying not to say nonprofit because we don't believe in the energy of nonprofit because everything you do is profitable. <laughs> no matter, no matter what you do, if you're not profitable, you won't stay in it long. Okay. So, so I don't want to say that. So I'm going with 501c3, right? So your 501c3 organization must have some assets that belong to it. Now, when you were in the trust structure, what happens? That trust owns those assets, not a person. So no person can say they own a thing that belongs to this organization that is headed by a 501c3 tax code, right? Okay. So no creditor can come after it. No, no, no entity, no person that would seek to do your organization some type of financial harm. All right. You have to know that when it is you're operating on this level or any level that people would, would see as progressing, progressing or progressive in life or winning, you're winning in life. Don't you know that you will be attacked? Don't you know that the red dot is on your forehead? Don't you know that people want to take what you have? Don't you know that people want to do what you do? Don't you know that people wish that you were not doing what you're doing and they want to have what you have, but they don't want to do the work that you've been doing. So if you don't know that your assets need enhanced protection, you need to come on board to the secured entrepreneur movement and, and, and what they say in the streets, learn your something. <laughs> come on and learn your something. Okay. Because when it is that you are out here utilizing these entities and, and, you know, like I said, Mr. Aurora has seen it all. People are like, well, if you come under my entity, you could do this and that. You don't have to get the letter. And they're doing all kind of I, don't, I can't use that word. People, people, I can't use that word. They're doing all kind of ridiculous things is what I'm going to say. They're doing ridiculous things that, that only leads you to, to, to a, a path that is going to have a, some, I'm going to say issues. I'm going to say problems. <laughs> okay. So enhanced asset protection is the second thing that Miss Aurora is going to say about this. The third thing that Miss Aurora is going to share about this I would have to say the trust format is giving the secured entrepreneur more of a streamlined operation. So I'm going to say streamlined operations there. Okay. So because the trust format is going to allow you to have fewer formalities and governance requirements. Yes. Fewer formalities and governance requirements, right? It's reducing your administrative burden. It's not like a corporation that would operate like this. We don't need a bunch of people who we're hiring because we have to stay in compliance with a governing agency. Like I was saying previously, we don't have a, we don't have a governing body that causes us to have so many people on a staff or volunteering to do a thing because we have to be in compliance with a governing body telling us this is how we have to do this because we got funding from here or we got funding from there or because we have this exemption letter this is what the irs is telling us we have to now do 
No, we need we we have a streamlined operation here based on what the Internal Revenue Service tells us that we have to do regarding a, a donor, people people who would give to us. You know, if you if you've got a religious situation, you may you may receive offerings and tithes. You still have the obligation of giving the, those individuals receipts so that they can file their taxes. If they are taxpayers, if they are 1040 taxpayers, they have the opportunity to to get a tax write off for their donation to your organization, their offering to your organization, or their tithe to your organization. Okay. So we like the fact that we have the opportunity to have streamlined operations in that we don't need a plethora of individuals to, to keep this thing together. No, we know what's going on here. We know how this thing has to go. And that's what we're doing. We have more time to now focus on the mission of this organization as opposed to all of the legalities that come along with trying to do it the traditional way and that leads me right on to the fourth thing that i would say about this privacy and confidentiality privacy and confidentiality how is that happening miss aurora <laughs> i'm so glad that you asked we know that your private trust documents are just that they are private. These documents will not be recorded anywhere in the public. So it's different if you're saying that you are a charitable organization, because we know that the charitable trust will more than likely have to go do a filing in the state and they have a they have a governing body and all of that because they, they are truly serving the public outright okay but when it is that you are operating uh on a private level like this and you are not making the public declaration that oh we're open to the public and we're taking donations from the public like salvation army you know like things like that okay you don't have to go and inform on this organization you don't have to go and file anything anywhere so this is what's going to help you have the ability to run the finances the way you need to run the finances run the organization the way you need to run the organization this entire thing is private okay now of course you're going to abide by trust law once again you're going to do what the internal revenue service tells us that we have to do in order to state that, yes, this is a 501c3 situation and we're going to give everybody their receipts. We're going to be in compliance as it relates to that. OK, but other than that, we have the privacy and the confidentiality. No one's going to see our structure. No one's going to see our setup. No one's going to see how this organization is actually being run, organized and managed okay and that is important for a lot of people who are out here making a heck of a lot of money okay and the money is moving internationally and the organization is actually operating on an international level you don't want the public to see all of what is going on there and you know we are, we are going on the fact we're going on the basis that you know the organization is being run in in an integrous and uh you know honest way okay that's that's where mr world is going to go with that simply because of all of the privacy and the confidentiality that you would have when you're going the trust route for your 501c3 organization and that leads me right into the fifth thing which is tax efficiency now all of the secured entrepreneurs know that you cannot legally evade taxation but you can legally avoid taxation OK, so now when you are operating under this heading in a trust format, you have the opportunity to now lessen your tax burdens as it relates to your estate. OK, because remember, this is a philanthropic goal, right? So we don't want like some traditional 501c3 structures. OK, we want to make sure that everything that is happening here is going to the right people at the right time in the right places 100 legally tax free 
All right. The trust format is providing that for you. Whomever the heirs are of this philanthropic mission, okay, whoever is listed as a beneficiary, whoever is listed to do a certain thing to pass this thing on, will be able to do that freely and privately easily okay there's there's not going to be any public agency like a court okay we're not going through probate we're not going through a bunch of strangers we're going we're going to be passing this thing along through to individuals who have been on this team who has who have been on this board who have been a part of this philanthropic effort from day one day two day three however long you 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 plan to have this thing in operation these individuals will have the opportunity to carry this mission on exactly the way that it was blueprinted from the beginning that matched the grantor's wishes the things that the grantor really desired to see happen with this so if the grantor was a person who loved animals like we all know mr roy loves animals right so you know hey look i want i want i want all these no kill shelters to be provided with this 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 and that i you know i want them to make i want to make sure that all the animals are healthy that we have vets coming in there that we have children who get to come and uh, um you know love on these animals and and you know we have a whole ministry as it relates to uh, mental health with children and why they need to come and be able to hug a dog hug a cat you know what i'm saying squeeze a cow you know uh, uh ride on a horse okay you know like all these things will be able to be carried on privately tax free because none of these people are going to have the burden of having to file anything relating to paying some tax connected to this mission. So these are all the perks. These, these are, I'm, I'm not going to say all, I'm going to say these are some, I named five. Okay. Because Mr. Warren could talk for three hours about this entire subject. <laughs> okay. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do the training on this entire thing so that everybody can get the training for those of you who are interested in setting your uh, businesses up in this manner and having this to, to work for you in the way that it, it would and should when you're, when you have it done correctly. Okay. I'm going to announce that, uh, this week. Okay. So that is what Miss Aurora wants to share in this video. I would say the other thing is everybody who has bought into the legacy wealth training and checklist, we've been getting a lot of emails, you know, like, wow, I can't believe that this thing is out here like this. It's been out here like this and I'm just learning about it. I did not really understand that I really had to start researching these things and doing things this way. And it's actually helping my life right now. We're in a crucial time. I don't know if you understand how crucial this time is right now in the United States of uh, the United States corporation. Let's just keep it real. All right. Uh, but, but we are, so I would say go down in the description box, click the link for the legacy wealth training and checklist. It's only $27. What are you losing? And then of course, if you want to, uh, talk to Miss Aurora afterwards and get some things together, you know, you can uh, email info at auroradayconsulting.com, but we'll probably be emailing you anyway. Okay. So that's all, you know, you can find me, Miss Aurora Day at auroradayconsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.